Let's take a look at another approximation algorithm for vertex cover by local ratio or layering. And let's start with an example. So we have a, we have a graph, vertices and edges. In a vertex cover, we want to pick a set of vertices such that for every edge, at least one of the endpoints is selected. And a min cardinality vertex cover is one where I do this with as few vertices as possible. What is a min cardinality vertex cover in this example? How many vertices do we need? So here we need four vertices. These four vertices, no matter which edge you look at, so let's say we look at this edge, and then we have this incident vertex. And for this edge, both of the endpoints were selected, but that's also not a problem. Now let's assume each vertex has a cost or weight, and we want to select a set of vertices such that the sum of the weights or sum of the costs is as small as possible. Then you can ask yourself, is this cover still a minimum vertex? That is not the case. The next question would be, if you take the standard two approximation for vertex cover, where we take a maximal matching and then take for each matching edge, both of the endpoints into the vertex cover. Does that still give us a true approximation if we have weights? So that is also not the case. Because, and the problem now here is, if, if I select an edge in the matching, then for the true approximation argument, we had that one of the two endpoints we would have had to select anyway, and then the other one just adds a factor of two. But here, if the one that we would have added anyway is the one with weight 14, and then additionally getting a cost of 35 does not give us a true approximation. So we are going to see now a different approximation algorithm for vertex cover. And this will also handle the min weight or min cost vertex cover problem. And let's do this by an example. So here we have our graph. And for any edge we will have to select at least one of the endpoints. So here we will have to pay a price of at least 14 to cover this edge. We just don't know whether we want to actually pick the vertex with weight 14 or the other one. What we're now going to do, we're going to decompose the weights. And that way also get two instances. How does that look like? So we decompose the weights in the following way. So we take this edge here, we take the smaller weight, which is 14, and we take one instance where we only have this 14 here for those two endpoints of that edge. All other weights I set to zero. And then the other instance, I simply have the remaining weights. For the vertices that I didn't touch, like the 41 here, I still have 41. For the ones that I so the one that was 14 has now remaining weight 0 here. The other one, 35 minus 14, 21. So I get a 21 here. And so I decompose the weights. And in that way, I get go from my instance with this weight W to two instances with weight W1 and W2. You think of W1, W2, and W kind of a vector of weights. And in the following, I will also simply always talk about W, W1, and W2, and do not specifically refer to the instance. So I select an edge, and then W for that edge, W1 of the endpoints is a minimum of the weights of the two, and all other weights are zero. And then W2 is simply W, the original weights, minus W1. And the Interesting observation here is if I look at these two instances now, and more importantly, I look at this first instance here. Now, any vertex cover for this instance has either weight 14 or 28. Why is that the case? Because I will have to select at least one of those two vertices. I have a cost of at least 14. 
But if I select both, or if I select all vertices even, then I still only get a cost of 20. Which means, no matter which vertex cover we pick here, as long as it's a valid vertex cover, it is a true approximation. Yeah, because either it has weight 14 or 28, and with 28 it's still a true approximation. So the idea is now the following. I now can also get a true approximation for this instance, then here I will have a vertex cover, which is a true approximation here. I take that vertex cover and also use it here because any vertex cover here is a true approximation. So if I have a true approximation factor for W2, it also gives me a true approximation factor for W1. So then hopefully I overall have a true approximation. And how do I get a true approximation on the, for W2? So that I can simply do recursively. I can again pick an edge and do the same again and again. And hopefully this works, so we'll still prove that. Instead of recursion, we could also simply iterate, iteratively solve this problem. These are just two different perspectives on the same approach. So the claim now is that if I can get a true approximation for W2, instance of W2, then I get a true approximation for my original problem, so for this problem here. And for that, we look at the following theorem, so called local ratio theorem. So if I can decompose my weights in that way, I have W1 plus W2, and let's say I have a solution which gives me an R approximation on W1, so in our case R is 2, and also an R approximation on W2. And the claim is that this solution also gives me an R approximation for the original W. So first of all, obviously, if X is a vertex cover for W1, then it's also for W2, and then it's also for W. So if it's a, if it's a feasible solution for one of the problems, then it's for all of them, because we have the same underlying graph. Now, but to prove this approximation factor, let's look at optimal solutions for the original problem, so the W problem, X star is this, and then X1 star and X2 star. Now what we have is that if I now look at this R approximation that I have for W1, then because it's an R approximation, I have that the weight of the solution, or the cost of the solution, is at most R times the optimal. Now, of course, X star is also a solution for the instance with W1. Not necessarily an optimal solution, but it is a solution. But because X1 star is optimal one, I get that this, so R times W1 X1 star is smaller or equal R times W1 of X star. And of course, this is at least the minimum cost I could get for W1. And then I have the factor R here. Overall, I can now conclude that W1x is smaller equal R times W1, and then the optimal solution of um, the original problem W. I can do the same for W2. I get the same bounds just with a 2 here and a 2 here. I can now add this up. So if I look at my solution x, and now apply it to the original solution, so I get this W of x. This I can write as w1 of x plus w2 of x, adding up the weights. I can plug in what I have above, so this gives me r times w1 x star plus r times w2 x star, but this now is simply the weight of the optimal x star, so I get x times w of x star, and this is what we wanted to prove. So this means that if I have a true approximation on w2 and W1 has this property that no matter which solution I get, it's also a true approximation there, then overall I get a true approximation. Let's look at this by continuing with the example that we already had. So this is my original problem. I select this edge here. Smaller edge weight is 14. So I here take an instance where I only have 14 and 14 here. This is the remainder. Now let's say we pick this edge now next because we work recursively or iteratively, both works. 
Now 21, 26, 21 is the smaller, so here I get an instance just with a 21 here. And then this is the remainder, so for instance 26 minus 21 is 5. And let's say I pick this edge next, I can pick an arbitrary edge next. Then I get here the 41, 41, because 41 is the smaller of the two. I get a 21 here, let's say I pick this one next, and then I get the 13, 13. And this is the remainder, and this then the only edge that I can still choose is the one down here. I do so, and then, and then I have the following instance, so I have the sum of all of these instances for these edges, and then what remains is this. And here, the algorithm stops, or the recursion stops, because there's no longer an edge where both endpoints have positive weight. So taking the minimum and subtracting it would make sense. But if there's no edge where both endpoints have positive weight, so every edge has an endpoint with weight zero, then we can also get a zero weight vertex cover, namely by picking all of those zeros, get all of them for free, because every edge has at least one endpoint zero. This covers all of the edges. So here I get a vertex cover of weight zero, so this is our base case. And then in each of the steps, we always had, so this, this is actually, would, I have an optimal cover. You have a two approximation with a lemma. This overall gives me a two approximation, combining it with the next sum. And again, I get a two approximation and so on. And essentially what that means, so what I'm doing here, I say I pick the ones with weight zero, and then that one is fine for all of those other instances too. I end up with taking from my original input simply exactly those vertices. Here we have the vertices with weight zero, and um, those are then the vertices that I originally pick here, obviously with a different weight, but what we've proven through the sequence is that this now indeed is a two approximation. So let's look at the technique again. What did we do? We decomposed the weights our original weight into a w1 plus w2 in such a way that any feasible solution for w1 is an r approximation, or in our case a 2 approximation. And then we recursed on the other end, one with w2. Here, of course, we could also have selected a different choice for w1 as long as this condition is fulfilled. And here is an interesting alternative choice. So let's say C is a minimum of weight of a vertex divided by its degree. And if you look at these numbers, the minimum is attained here. So weight divided by degree, 14 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4 here is 3 half. This is C, and now we're going to define W1 in the following way. So W1 of a vertex is simply C times its degree. For this vertex that defined C, this we are simply back to 14. And for instance, with a degree of 3, this one has degree 3, 1, 2, 3, 3 times 3 half is 10 half. Degree 2, 2 times 3 half is 7, and so on. So this is our choice for W1. Before proving that this is actually a choice for W1 that works, let's first note that we have to be slightly careful. We should do the following. So if there's a degree zero vertex at any point in time, then we simply throw that vertex away. Because if it has degree zero, it cannot contribute to the vertex cover. Also, if it has degree zero, it would mess up, obviously, this calculation, because we would divide by zero. Also, if a vertex has weight zero, then again, the problem would be that C ends up being zero. If it has weight zero, what we do is we also remove it, but we also add it to the vertex cover, because with weight zero, we can get it for free. And so in that way, we always can see that there's no zeros here. So this, is this one we would remove together with its incident edge. 
Now let's prove that this choice of W1 actually works. Let's first look at what is the largest weight that our vertex cover could get. And the largest weight is the weight that we would get if we select all vertices. So now this is simply by definition the sum of c times the degree. So if I take c outside, c times the sum of the degrees. Now, if I use a hand checking lemma, so the hand checking lemma says in a graph, the sum of the degrees is two times the number of edges. And that is the case because if you look at an edge, it contributes to the degree of both of the endpoints. So therefore, sum of the degrees is two times the number of edges. So here we are now of W1 of the whole set would be C times two times the number of edges. So now let's look at an optimal cover. An optimal cover, to be a feasible solution, it has to cover all edges. And that means that this cover will have to have at least a degree for every edge, so or differently stated, the number of edges is smaller or equal to the sum of the degrees of any feasible solution, in particular of the optimal solution. What this gives us is that I can bound this W1 of V, which is bounded by C times 2E, and now for E I plug in this, so I get that W1V is more or equal to 2 times the C we have here again, and then we have this sum here, so we took take the C back into the sum, and this now is simply W1 of that set, so of the optimal. And we have this factor two that occurs here and there. We now have that no matter which vertex cover we take, we add most of factor two away of the optimal vertex cover. So we have a guaranteed two approximation here. And then the same argument as before applies. So we get a two approximation. And what makes this version interesting is that it also generalizes to set cover. So in, in the book, this is in the chapter about set cover, the layering algorithm. And what you get there is that you get a k approximation in a set cover instance where every element occurs in at most k sets. So to wrap up, what we've seen is another technique for approximation, namely local ratio or layering. And it was based on decomposing the weight function, making sure that for the W1, any feasible solution is an R approximation, and then iterating or recursing on the rest, getting an R approximation on the there, and then overall getting an R approximation.